Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Matt here with another game update. So a lot of big things have happened this month with the game. I've worked on tons of new weapons. I made a whole new game mode. I worked on my NPC AI a bit and I fixed a lot of bugs. I've also tentatively picked a name for the game, finally. I'm calling it Nightshaders. That name actually has a personal connection with me too, because it's very similar to the name of the neighborhood that I grew up in as a child. And my childhood is where I'm pulling most of my inspiration from for this game. Anyway, let's get into the game and check out all the progress that we made this month. I really wanted to start focusing in on that new player experience. So what are the first five minutes of playing the game gonna be like? How can I make that be as good as possible as I introduce you to the world and all of its game systems? So I did that in a bunch of different ways or I've tried to, tried to solve that problem or make it a little bit better. The first I'll show you is I, I threw these little information signs in. Um, you can walk up to them and they'll give you a little tip about one game system or another. The players you talk to are gonna be more, more about the story, more about telling you what's going on in the world. I've also been on the lookout for showstoppers that new players might run into. If they get to the first level and they don't have a new weapon, they're gonna be in a lot of trouble. They, they basically have to just run through the level and hope they don't die. Here I actually, depending on how many players are in the game, I'll spawn a weapon for them. And then if by the time they get to the first level, they still don't have a weapon, just to kind of make sure that they, they can still play the game, I will also spawn a weapon there. So I'm trying to give them at least a couple opportunities, uh, even if I have to be a little bit heavy handed. Then I added a whole new system of status effects. So depending on the weapon you have, like if you have a, re a ranged weapon, you fire some shots and you reload, you'll see this little reload icon pop up, um, which will give you an idea of like how long it's gonna last. Every ranged weapon has a slightly different reload time. Some of them are longer. This one's actually pretty quick. I added a cooldown to the roll ability. So now you can't just spam it like you did before. That actually has really changed the game because before you were much faster than any weapon or any enemy in the game. You didn't really have to engage with a lot of them. You could just kind of roll past them. Now there's, there's enemies that are a lot quicker than you. You really do have to deal with them. Two other status effects that I added. One is the slow status effect and one is the poison. So that paired with the color tinting I do to your character will hopefully explain what's happening to you. So you'll know like what is happening to you when I'm, when I'm blue, I'm slowed and I'll have the little slow icon and it should show the duration. So you know how long it's gonna be affecting you. Most of the weapons in my game up until now have been rough blockouts or just sort of kit bash together from the few that I've actually finished. So I wanted to do a pass on all the ones that didn't have art yet and kind of update those, like bring them up to the quality that I wanted. One of the limitations I had was that I had to keep the handles in the same spot just because I wanted to keep things simple for my animation. But here we have on the left, the sniper rifle. You can see I still kind of tried to keep like that toy like quality. Things are still big and chunky and it'll help so you can see them better from the top down camera angle. This is the flamethrower, which is probably gonna end up being like a bubble maker or something like that. And then this is what I'm gonna use as my shotgun. It's sort of like a hairdryer thing. Uh, I had like a fish, you just smack people with a big fish. Uh, I got a hammer, rubber chicken, plunger, golf club, spatula, wooden sword. Got our frying pan there, the tennis racket and baseball bat. And again, I'm sort of following the same rule that I did with the range weapons, where I wanna be able to use the exact same handle position for all of them so that it works with my animations. I'm always trying to get the most reuse out of everything I make. I went ahead and made color themes for all of them to help add even more variety to the game so that when you're running around as a player, like you're rarely going to find the same weapon over and over again, or at least not exactly the same weapon. I apply different projectiles with the different weapon bases. Now that's sort of reflected in the character art too, which is really cool. I'll just flip through a few more of them so you can kind of see all the different variety. Um, I'm not hitting all of them, but just kind of flipping through my list here of different weapons. Um, and yeah, those are my weapons or kind of where they're at now. I've also made some uh, user experience improvements to the level select. First, I went and added some pop-ups here that will tell you the name of the level before you actually commit to going into it. Here's where we just came from the training camp. Down the road here, there's a shop, which I'm Pretty sure I'm gonna get rid of this and move it somewhere else. I have a different idea for how I wanna do shops. The entrance to the zones, it'll tell you the name. So this is Shady Oaks Ranch. The levels inside here are a little bit different. 
So when you go up to them, it's gonna tell you the mission type and it would potentially show you if there was any special reward for this level. So like if it was gonna be like a, a weapon upgrade or health upgrade or something like that, that would show up here too. I want the player to basically see some of these and make choices as far as the, like the path that they wanna go down. Once you commit to this side, you can't go to that side anymore. So you kind of lose access to that tree. That was a standard mission. This is a key mission, so you have to retrieve a key. And then this one here, this is the new mission. This is pretty cool. This is holdout. This one, you have to survive a bunch of different waves. Uh, I think it's like 10 or something, but it gets progressively harder. Progressively stronger monsters come at you and you have to survive it. And that's how you beat the mission. This mission starts a little bit differently than the normal missions in my game. You don't just run into the map and find monsters ready to attack you. In this one, you're in a small level. I only have one currently, but I'll make, uh, I'll have some more variety. I also fix consumables, there's a lot more. I have the difficulty tuned up right now to, to hopefully get a good variety of monsters spawning. And it thinks that I have four players in the game and that's why there's so many consumables spawning right now. Like that's a ton, because it thinks you're gonna, be, you're gonna be sharing between other players. But yeah, so you're in this small map, it's locked out, so I can't, yeah, it's locked, I can't escape. To start the mission, you actually hit this trigger in the middle of the map. Once you hit that, all hell should break loose. And like I said, this difficulty is gonna be turned up a lot more than you would normally encounter right away. So let's see what, what happens here. Whoa. So yeah, we're getting tons of different monsters uh, attacking us. We got spawners. Oh geez. Oh, I got... Oh my God. Yeah, I feel like I must have some bug with the consumables or or maybe because it's just turned up all the way. Oh my God, there's so many. I, I don't know how many waves I'm gonna face with this one, uh, but you'll go through waves. It'll get progressively harder. Each time there should be more and more monsters and they should be getting more and more souped up as they come after you. I have like the perfect weapon for this right now. This, uh, this shotgun, boomerang shotgun is great at clearing like big waves. My God, there's so many consumables on the ground. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I gotta get into get to that health. Oh. We're back at full health. And it looks like we beat, we beat the holdout. So now when I go back to uh, this door here, it should be open, yeah it is. And this is where you'd be able to collect your rewards. So you get a bit an ability. Uh, we got the turret, so we can place a, a little gumball machine that will shoot shoot baddies that come up to us. And over here, you get you get a weapon. So I got a paper airplane thing that's like shoots these zigzaggy uh, paper airplanes. And that's uh, that's holdout. I've done a bit of work on shops to make them look a little bit better. You'll come up to this sort of encampment where you'll see three items for sale every time they're random, change depending on where you are in the game. Like the later you are in the game, those weapons are gonna be a lot stronger than at the beginning. This is a chance for you to spend all of that hard earned candy and buy some nice upgrades. So like this one is a uh, weapon upgrade. I need to fix the pop up there. It should pop up and tell you. This is a sniper rifle that shoots water balloons. This is the, oh, why is that not showing up? This is another ability. It's the one that shoots at a wall. I also did a lot of work on my uh, NPC's AI over this, this month. I've been struggling with a lot of inconsistencies with their behavior where like, hey, they'll, they'll run away randomly or just do things I wouldn't expect. And so I really wanted to dive in and figure that out. I created this debug line that will show when a NPC can see me and when it can't, which was a really useful, simple tool. And it led me down this rabbit hole into the layer collision matrix, which I, you know, I'd never used before. If you go to edit, project settings, then go to physics and scroll all the way down, you'll see a bunch of checkboxes. This is the layer collision matrix. This is a really cool feature that I have no clue how I didn't know about before. Basically, it allows you to be a bit more specific in how your objects interact with one another. So for instance, I have objects that have this enemy projectiles tag on them. And here I've defined, okay, that you're only allowed to interact with other objects that are on the prop layer, 
the ground layer or the player layer. I never need to worry about my enemy projectiles colliding with my player projectiles because I just don't allow that interaction to happen. This has been amazing for a lot of reasons. Unity doesn't have to worry about as many uh, collision or physics interactions, but then also I don't have to worry about doing all these string checks or tag checks when two objects collide to make sure that I'm hitting the right object that I want to because I'm being more precise with these physics layers. So I'm sort of midway through doing this to my entire project. And yeah, it's, it's already been a big savings and I just thought I'd share that with you guys if anyone else didn't know about it. One cool thing that I just did recently was sign up for Steamworks and pay the deposit. So if you don't know, I mean, I'm sure you do, but that's Valve's distribution platform. I'm still waiting to be approved on it, but hopefully that'll happen within the next week or so. Then that means we're one step closer to being able to do those public play tests. And I'm, I just cannot wait to you know, share more information with you there, be able to have you guys play the game firsthand and get your feedback. It's really cool to just see some progress on this front. I'm super psyched. I have a Discord now, woo! Um, yeah, come join if you're interested in keeping up with the game on the daily. I'll be posting updates here a lot more frequently and yeah, I hope to talk with all of you there soon. I'll post a link to that down in the description. If you liked the video and wanna follow along, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.